Hello everyone, I thought I would do a crayon crochet along. So today we're going to be doing this crayon. Um, I have found a lot of different patterns and this is the one that I tweaked to make it where I liked it uh, the best. Uh, this is a great scrap yarn project because it really doesn't use a lot of any one color. You just need the three colors. Uh, two contrasting colors. This would be the paper and then this is of course is the crayon color and then just a little bit of black. As you can see it's just two rows of black and then you'll also need fiber fill. Of course your scissors. I decided to use a five millimeter hook. It's an H in the Boyd series and this is the size crayon it makes. So that kind of gives you an idea. If you go down a hook size, your crayon will be smaller. And of course, if you go up a hook size, which I really don't recommend because then it makes a larger stitch and you could see the stuffing underneath it. So I would just recommend using five as your max, but you will also need to tie in your ends. So you'll need a darning needle. And then if you uh, choose a threader, <coughs> So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I decided to do the blue crayon, uh, just I figured it would show up the best on camera. So I used a five millimeter hook or an H hook, and this is with the Boyd series. So yours might be a little low, smaller or a little larger, but right around the five. And it produces, a crayon at about six inches long. So if you go a little smaller, um, it could be five and a half to five inches. Uh, it just depends. Um, as far as the width, it's about an inch and a half um, for the for the diameter of the crayon. Uh, if you're looking for a very young child, that might be too thick. So that's what you're gonna get as far as the size with a five millimeter hook. So we're gonna start our project with a magic circle. And you're going to place four single crochets. actually going to redo that. Because you're working from the tip to the end, these four stitches, if you don't want to have a weird bubble at the tip of your crayon, they need to be, I don't want to say tight, but try to not have any extra slack on the stitches. And it is hard the first couple of rounds because it's such a small area that you're working. But just take your time, do your best. It's not any rush to get it done. So after you do your four stitches, sticking to each other, you're going to close your circle This can be a little tight, so just be careful getting it in there. Now I'm going to work my tail into my circle. So you can choose to do this in continuous rounds, or if you prefer to do each round individually, you would slip stitch and then chain one beginning each round. And that'll give you that seamed um, <clears throat> look, but all of your lines will be even. So for example, you won't have this scenario um, because this was worked continuous. So I'm gonna do this tutorial um, with a seamed around. I just wanna see if, how different it looks. So after I closed my circle, I chained one. For round two, 
it's a single crochet and then a double crochet. So I'm going to try my best to get a single crochet into that same stitch. Oh, goodness, this is tight. All right, so that's a single. And normally, I wouldn't use a stitch marker for this first round, but for the tutorial, I'll go ahead and slide it in there because it's just going to be a few stitches. So it's a single and then an increase, which is two stitches. All right, so go ahead and finish that and I will meet you back and we'll start round three. Okay, so for round three, we are going to continue to increase. You should have a very small nub and that last stitch should have pulled it in a little bit where you can see it's just starting to um, create that point for the crayon tip. So in round three, we're going to single crochet in the first two stitches and then do the increase. So your pattern is one, one, two. And at the end, you should have eight stitches. So go ahead and start that and I will meet you at the end of round three. Okay, so welcome back. We're on round four. So what I decided to do instead of cutting my tail from that uh, magic circle I'm just going to kind of tuck it inside because remember you're gonna stuff this so it just adds to the filling and when you put that fiber fill in there maybe uh, the yarn will kind of keep it from poking through so for round four we're just going to do single crochet around uh, one single crochet in each stitch so at the end, you should have eight stitches. So go ahead and do that, and we will meet you back for round five. Okay, so round five, we're gonna continue to increase. You should definitely start to see a nub at this point. It should have a little uh, cup shape to it, uh, and you're, it's not going to be pointy, but it's definitely uh, cupping around and, and starting to form into that tip of the crayon. So for round five, you're going to single crochet in the first three stitches and then do an increase. So it's going to be one, 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 two as your repeat, and you should have a total of 10 stitches at the end of round five. Okay, so round six, we are going to do four single crochets or one single crochet in the next four stitches and then your increase. So at the end you should have 12 stitches. So it'll be four singles and then your double. And you're gonna do that two times around so you'll have a total of 12 stitches. I'll meet you back here at the end. Okay, I went ahead and I moved my crayon here just so that you could be reminded of the really cool project that we're making. So for round seven, so we're gonna to continue to increase, and I know it's tiny and it's hard to, to maneuver in these tiny little spaces, but you should definitely be seeing the shape of that point of the crayon. So round seven is a single crochet in the next five stitches, and then the increase. And you're gonna do that around twice, so you should have 14 stitches at the end of round seven. Okay, so for round eight, we are going to work this in the front loops only. So we are going to just work on the front side of the stitch. So you're going to work in the next six stitches. You're gonna put one single crochet and then your increase. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I mean, just in case there's a few people out there that have never done it before. If you notice, and, and I apologize, I didn't realize how dark this yarn was on, on this video, um, but you'll see the top of the stitch, here, it might be easier if I use the needle, has two uh, 
it's a V. It's a V shape. I don't know how else to call it. Um, so the front loop, you're just going to go in this front section of the stitch. Okay. Hope you can see that on the video. So you're going to do, you're going to go around six stitches in the front loop only and do one single crochet. And then in the seventh stitch, you're going to put your increase. So that's one. Whoops. Okay, so go ahead and finish that and I will meet you at the end of round eight. And you should have 16 stitches. Okay, so before we go ahead and start round nine, we're going to stuff the tip of our crayon. And I have one of these handy dandy little dowels, which makes it really easy when you get your stuffing. And you don't need a lot at this point because it's just a little tiny tip. So just start with a little bit and then try to get it in there as best you can, as, as firm as you can. And these work really really nice. Um, sometimes if you use the crochet hook, it, it actually ends up pulling it out because of that the hook on it. So this is nice. Um, if you don't have one, you can also use um, the eraser part of a pencil or maybe a pen cap. I'm not really quite sure. But I like to get this in really, um, really tight so that the tip stays nice and firm. And then as we move along in the crayon, we will add stuffing as we go. It's not your traditional amigurumi where you stuff right before you're closing. So try to get your tip in there as full as you can. Okay, that's good. So now at this point, our tip or the crayon, the wax part of our crayon is done. So now we're gonna to move to these two rows of what starts the paper portion of your crayon. So that would be the lighter of your two colors. And, and of course I'm using light blue. So you're going to attach your secondary color And then for round nine, you're going to, again, use the front loops only, and you're going to single crochet around, and that will be your 16 stitches still. So go ahead and slip stitch to get your, your blue, and I'm gonna tighten that loop up before I go around, um, before I close it, actually, sorry. Ugh. It's a little awkward when it's tiny like this. So remember, you're going to go in that front loop only, and you're going to go one single crochet in every stitch, front loops only. And then you can cut the dark color or the, the, the crayon part. I just like to get that first single crochet in there so it locks in that blue or the color that I'm adding. And then I just tighten that dark blue, and then you can go ahead and snip that off had a pair of scissors here. There we go. And snip the blue off. And then you can go ahead and tie these two together and just add that excess yarn right into the stuffing. Since it's on the inside, no one's going to see it. So that's what's really nice. So go ahead and tie that off. And then remember, it's one single crochet in all of the stitches, front loops only. And I'll see you at the end of round nine. Okay, sorry, I had a few camera difficulties in that break. So now we're getting ready to start round 10, and it's the second row of the paper color or your lighter shade of whatever color crane you're making. And we're going to just do 16 stitches around. So as you can see, I just took my tails and just stuffed them right on top. And I'm just gonna work them right in the next time I add more stuffing, I'm just going to put it right on top. 
So for round 10, we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch. And so that's that second row of your paper color. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you at, around at the end. Okay, so we just finished round 10 and now we're going to do this uh, one row of black. So we're going to change colors again and it should be black. Um, and unfortunately black is one of the worst colors to show up on camera. So to reduce that line as much as possible, whenever you change colors, insert your hook into that next stitch yarn over and pull it through and then you want to grab your next color whatever color you're changing to and then slip it through the tops and it's a little awkward because the the it's nothing it's not secured so just make sure you don't pull that out and then we're going to do one single crochet around. So again, it should be 16 stitches. And I will meet you at the end of round 11. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention um, before I went off camera was because you're only doing one round of the black, I did not cut my, my light blue. Because what I'm going to do now is just do 10 rows of the blue. So on the inside, it's not going to look very pretty, but no one will see that. So I'm just now going to pick up my light blue and end up cutting my black. So I will end up tying the working yarn of the black with that initial tail. I'll tie those two together and um, I'll cut those a little low because black can be seen through this light color. So I'll cut that where there's not um, as long of a tail left on it. And then I'm gonna continue working with my blue. So for the next 10 rounds, you're going to just do one single crochet around. So actually what you're doing is you're building this tube. So don't forget to stuff along the way if you've, feel like it's going to be difficult for you when you get up here. So my stuffing is, is pretty far down. So I'm going to do a few rows of the light blue and then I'm gonna add some stuffing. So go ahead and do 10 rounds and I will see you back. All right, I wanted to show you a trick that I um, just kind of figured out on my own. Um, so before I get too far away from this row of black, I don't like how when I switch colors, I can see a little bit of that, um, the light blue. So what I'm doing is taking the black yarn from inside um, the, the crayon, the legs, and I put my sewing needle on there, and I'm just going to kind of throw a stitch or two over that black. Just be careful you don't get the blue caught up in there. So I'm just trying to kind of cover that blue a little bit. So I'm just gonna try my best to go in there and just kind of hide that blue a little. It just makes it a little cleaner. Um, it, you're not going to get a perfect line, especially if you're doing uh, continuous rounds. If you are doing a seamed round, you might be able to make that nice and flush. But I just like to just do that one little stitch. It helps cover that up and it just makes it look a little neater. And then of course, tie it and then um, I'll cut off the uh, extra legs so that it, the black does not show through when I stuff it. Because if you're if you stuff it and it's too close to the lining of the crayon, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm thinking and talking at the same time. It's not a good, it's not a good combination. So if you, if you, when you're stuffing, if, if the black is right up against the wall of the crayon, it might show through. 
So I um, like to cut it not too short, just a little bit. This way, when, when I stuff it, it doesn't curl up around the sides of the wall. And then just add a little bit of stuffing, kind of cover that up, and then keep going. And remember, you're doing just 10 rounds of single crochet. And I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, we are now um, inserting the hook through both parts of the, the V in, in the stitch, so you're not doing front loops only anymore. That was only um, when you're changing out the, the dark blue to, uh, well, the, the crayon color to the paper color. Now we're back into regular stitches where you're going through both uh, um, chains on the, uh, on the top of the stitch. So remember, 10 rounds, so you should be, well, if you're using a, a five millimeter hook, it should be about two and a half inches. So you can just um, go around and around and then count it later. Every bump is a, is a row, or you can uh, just continue to use your stitch marker and count out your 16 stitches around. But I'll see you at the end of 10 rows. Okay, so are, are you looking like a crayon yet? It should definitely be looking like a crayon, right? At this point. So I've just completed my 10 rounds and I added my stuffing. And so we're right at the point where we're going to do one round of black. Well, let me get it, oops, this direction in the camera. So what I'm going to do, normally when you're changing colors, you would cut the yarn you're working with. But because it's only that one row, I'm going to leave my light blue attached and I'm going to do my round of black because right here is my light blue again. So I'll cut it after I complete this round of the light blue. So you're going to do one round of black. What's really nice is uh, if you can keep your stitch count, this is a really easy project because it is just that 16 stitch all the way around for the majority of the, the project. It's just when you're building it up to the 16 and then when we get over here to the, the, flatting, the flattening part of the, the back end of the amigurumi. Um, one thing too I wanted to mention, this is a good point uh, in the project, if you wanted to add safety eyes and then do any kind of um, smile, um, usually they recommend um, just a few rows down from this black stripe. So you, you can put it like right around in here. Um, if the black was uh, round nine, so 11, 12, 13, give or take. And then um, don't forget when you're doing safety eyes, you need to put it through a stitch, not, not in a hole, but through the center of a stitch. You want to, let me come in a little closer. So, whoops, this is so hard to do this. It's like working in a mirror. So you don't want to go into the hole of the stitch because then the, the safety eye could come through. You want it to catch because the safety eye has little um, threading on, on, the, on the eye part of it. So you want to put it through the stitch so that those grooves can catch and it won't go through the amigurumi or pull out for that matter. Um, and then you could just with a crochet thread uh, draw a smile or sew a smile on. Or if you wanted, you could use black yarn um, or if you wanted to do red because lips, it's up to you. Um, but at this point right now, we're just going to do one round of black and remember, keep your blue yarn attached. So that 16 stitches in in the full the full top of the the, the single crochet and I'll meet you back. Okay, so I just finished my round of black and I I cut my black yarn. So I have my my two tails hanging out and remember we're 
we're going to do now a round of the paper color, in my case, the light blue. So what I did was I have my loops ready to go to join in. Let me just tighten that a little bit. And as I go around, it'll, it'll tighten. I'm going to just pick up my blue. So again, it's not gonna look really pretty on the inside, but that to me doesn't matter. So I'm going to join in my blue and then you're going to do one round of the blue. Oh, well, the paper color for you. And then once I get that stitch locked into place, I will go back, tighten my legs up, that tightens that stitch, and I will tie these off and tuck them in, cut, cut them and cut, tuck them inside. So do one round of the blue or the, the paper color that's 16 stitches and going through the full top of the stitch and I'll meet you back. Okay, so I don't know if your workspace is looking like this with all these strings coming around it, but that's kind of where I'm at. So I just cut my light blue tail and I I haven't yet cut my black because I want to see if I need to sew a stitch to cover it, but I want to complete that first. So now you're going to attach whatever color you're using, yellow, blue, red, um, the darker color, because um, now we're going to work this last part of the project. And if you can see, this this round is done in the back loops and so it creates that little ridge if you don't like that ridge then you can just go through both uh, parts of the stitch um, but i just think it adds a little bit of character it sets it off for the to the back end of it so that's up to you um, but you can do it in the back loops and it will create that little ridge so while we're on camera i know i haven't really crocheted a lot on camera So I'm going to get my dark blue and I'm going to slip it through and then, oh, this is kind of awkward, in that back, oops, try to not catch that tail, in the back loop only, you're going to do one round of single crochet. Sometimes it's just easier to let go of the working yarn and then just pick it up. Once you get your hook in the right stitch, it's easier, in my opinion, to grab the front loop than it is to grab the back loop. Sometimes that back loop's a little harder to grab. All right, so do one round in the back loops only, and I will see you at the end. Okay, so I wanted to show you a little um, trick, I guess. I don't know if it's really a trick. So as I was tying off my light blue and my black, and I did add that extra stitch in there, I cut all three tails, not thinking about the uh, blue uh, tail from adding it. I didn't have a tail left to tie it, uh, and I didn't really want to knot it. So what I did was I pulled out all the stuffing, and I reached down from inside and I got the the light blue I chose the light blue so as it was being pulled up the side of the crayon you didn't see that that dark blue but you can see the inside is not very pretty in my in my project um, but that's okay because once it's stuffed again and back in order you won't be able to tell at all and it will look fantastic and so will yours so now that i fixed that little mistake i'm gonna restuff hopefully by now um, you've stuffed your crayon a few times hopefully we are almost done i like to roll it just to kind of help with that shape especially because I pulled that stuffing out and it was kind of clumpy. All right, let me try to get this back in order here. Those tails are gonna end. All right, so looking better. 
All right, so let me finish this round. I didn't quite get to the end before I realized what I had done wrong. So I just have a another stitch here, two stitches actually. So that completes that round of back loops only. So now we're going to just do one round of single crochet. So now we're kind of building a little bit of height there, okay? So just do one round, 16 stitches, hook goes under full top of the stitch, okay? And I will see you back after you've completed those 16 stitches. All right, so we're just moving along. We are coming to the very end of our project. And the next step, I, I brought out my red and yellow just so that you could see it a little easier. Uh, we are going to be working on the decreasing now. So we're gonna go from 16 stitches down to eight. And it's done in the back loops, and if you can tell, it's kind of hard to see, um, by putting it in the back loop, it tilts the stitch. So um, it gives it a nicer, um, a nicer effect on the top. But it does create this ridge, okay? So you're gonna do a, a, a single crochet two together or a decrease around the full top of your 16 stitches. So at the end, you should have eight. So you're gonna go ahead and in the back loops, oops, I didn't grab the full loop. Okay. And then you can use your stitch marker if it helps. So you're gonna do a decrease all the way around in the back loops. So just insert in the back loop. Remember it's two together, it's a decrease. All right, so go ahead and finish that round. And I will see you at the end. Okay, so this is the last chance to make your final stuffing. If you should only have eight stitches. It should be pretty tiny there. So um, at this point, you just need tiny little bits and you may wanna just stuff it into the little corners. And then kind of massage it down and shape your crayon. Make sure it's where you want it. If it's too much, take some out. But this is this is the last round. So um, actually, that was the last round that you just finished. So now we're going to close it off. So I always like to just tighten my loop. And you do need to have a tail. It doesn't need to be excessive. Um, you know, maybe the length of if you know maybe six inches something like that it doesn't have to be super long um, the way I always like to close a project is I like to slip stitch into the next stitch I like to slip stitch twice that's just my preference so slip stitch once I, I personally slip stitch a second time. And then on that second one is when I pull through to fasten off. And then you just wanna tighten that, go to put a little tug on it. 
and you'll see you still have a hole and you're thinking, oh no, I did something wrong. But no, you didn't. It's still, it's right. So you're going to get your needle and you're going to thread it. Well, I, I thread mine. Everyone does it a little different, I suppose. So now when you're closing uh, your, your project, I personally like to grab just the outer loop or the front loop and, and pull it so that um, there's no slack but don't pull where it cinches and it gathers. I just like to pull it through or, or uh, weave it through the front loops of all my stitches, pulling in any slack. I hope you can see this on camera so I don't wanna to have to re-record this. <laughs> okay, and now once I've gone through all the way around you want to just make sure you got your stuffing in there. You want to cinch it closed. And it should just pull really beautifully. Close it up. Pull it, but don't over pull so that it, it um, tears or uh, snaps the yarn. And then I just like to throw a little knot. And again, I just like to help it a little bit so it doesn't distort the piece. And if you've um, made amigurumi in the past, then you're aware of how to hide that tail. Um, what I like to do is find the hole underneath it without losing my tail on my needle. I like to grab underneath it and I like to stay within the same color range. I won't um, take my my needle, here, let me try to do it so you can see better, and, and poke out the, the side down here. I'm just gonna keep it up here at the top. Um, just because it is the dark blue, I wanna keep it all together. And just kinda weave it back and forth. And um, if you go back in on the same hole then um, and don't pull really tight then you shouldn't uh, it should just disappear it shouldn't leave any mark if you're going in and out of a different hole then you're going to see a definite mark and then try to cut it down as close as possible without cutting any of the yarn and then I just take my needle and go right underneath the surface of the stitching and just pull that last little nub through and that's it you're done just give it once one um, roll over you know just kind of uh, you can take it on a table but remember it's going to be loved and it's going to be squished and um, manipulated so it doesn't have to be perfect um, the one wonderful thing about homemade items is it doesn't have to be perfect in fact it's those imperfections that really make it special um, you know if you're really handy you could uh, embroider the color the word blue um, it might be difficult when you have a long color name like yellow or maybe orange. I mean, red seems like it would fit fairly easy. So, um, but that's an idea. Um, if you have a kindergarten teacher, uh, maybe you want to put the name, you know, Mr. Smith or Mrs. Uh, Jones or the name of the school. It just depends on, on what your creativity is. Um, if you made it a face and you put eyes and a mouth, then there probably wouldn't be room to put a name on there. Um, but honestly, I I like them plain. I like them um, plain so that you could give them to your little one and they could color the walls all they want with these crayons because they won't leave a mark. Um, that's what's really nice about crochet crayons. Um, their their uh, cleanup is much easier than the real thing. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. 
please like and subscribe. And uh, I hope to be getting more videos out soon. Thanks so much.